Welcome to the Clear the Shelf podcast with Chris and Chris, the show that meets at the intersection of education and entertainment to discuss online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, wholesale, and all facets of selling on Amazon. We'll bring you news, tactics, strategies, insights, stories, and interviews to help you grow your Amazon business. And now, here are your hosts, Chris Grant and Chris Racing. What's up, Amazon sellers, and welcome back to the Clear the Shelf podcast with myself and my mordacious co-host, Chris Rasick. Uh, today's guest is Ken Yeomans. Uh, that is at, ye- is it Yes E Ken or, or Yes I Ken? Yes I Ken. Uh, e- either way, yeah, uh, <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, and he may be the Lego king of Twitter. Uh, he also runs a, a group called Brick Dynasty uh, that helps other people buy, sell, and, and invest in Lego. Um, and honestly, this is this is something that fascinates me because I've known about this for a long time, but I might be too impatient uh, and I've never done it, even though I know that it exists and I know that the return is better than, say, even the stock market uh, if you choose the right sets. Uh, so today, we're going to have Ken kind of break down why this works and, and how we can implement this into our own businesses. But before we dive in, you know the drill. It takes us several minutes to prepare for this show. So if you find some value in this podcast, if you could take a moment and tickle the algorithm for us, uh, podcast discovery seems to be largely based on reviews. And if you would take a minute and just leave us a review on your favorite podcast player, we would appreciate it. Uh, It can be good, bad, ugly. Uh, You don't like our faces or you think we're great. Uh, We'll take anything you got um, and uh, and thank you for it. So, Ken, thanks again for coming on the show, man. Uh, This is this is honestly something I'm really fascinated by. Um, And I think that I might have a bit of analysis paralysis as much as I. Uh, talk to other people about getting over that. Uh, so if nothing else, I hope that this, you know, kind of uh, makes me take the leap. So, but before we get started, I kind of wanted to set the table a bit. And I was wondering how, if you could share how you got started kind of getting into Lego and and what pulled you into the Amazon side and, and all of that. Well, thank you guys for having me. Let's see if we can uh, loosen up some of that paralysis for you. Thank uh, you. So I got started when uh, when the whole world shut down, basically, okay. like a lot of people here. And I was I was lucky enough that I didn't need the uh, the check that the government decided to hand out. So mm-hmm. I took it. And says, you know, I've been hearing about this reselling thing. Let's let's give that a shot. And uh, basically, the long story short of it is, I didn't like reselling. Like it's it's a lot of work. I mean, what you guys do is just it's mind blowing, and I had very little time to dedicate to it. And I had discovered Lego through uh, through PFP, which uh, mm-hmm. Joe Hart's group at the time, and that for my schedule made a lot more sense to me because it's it's very limited. I mean, every year there's only a couple hundred sets that retire. So you, there isn't a whole lot to choose from. So you can do your homework and you can just decide which of those you want to sell and say, you know, 20 or 30. And then you can just do that. And that's all of your time. If you've got a really busy schedule and you're just looking for income and you don't care how long it takes to get there, which was my case, it's perfect. I can't sit and source for three hours a night and learn how to do things and pull my, well I don't have a lot of hair but I can't pull my hair out you know why, why is everything tanking what am I doing wrong I, I just honestly I, I couldn't want to learn I, I think it was a big factor there what you guys do is just astounding and it's, it's it's way more than I'm willing to do honestly this is way I, more in my wheelhouse I like that. I, it's kind of it, it was a it was a lazy way to get into it. I I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm I'm curious what because I I said you know you can get better returns on Lego than you can in the in the stock market. 
Yep. Uh, what kind of returns do you normally get on investing in Legos? So basically what I've got it down to now is one of two things happen. I sell at just around you know 90 to 100 percent roi or i say all right i quit on this one we're moving on and we'll be somewhere my failure i consider around 30 percent and that's we'll take that that's solid <laughs> yeah but, so I, I guess you can look at that part two ways though it's 30 percent return as a failure in reselling is pretty good 30% in investing, that kind of hurts because you just had your money tied up for a year or so for 30%. Mm -hmm. St still better than the market in a lot of ways. But if this is your side hustle to your side hustle, it's, it, it's not wonderful, right? Interesting. All right. So you something you, you pointed out at, at the beginning there was about a hundred or so uh, sets retire every single year. And out of those 100 or so sets, you're choosing to invest in 20 or 30. Yeah. So yeah. I'm curious if you could walk us through kind of your approach to determining the potential value appreciation of a particular Lego set like over time. And, and, and then what, what is that time horizon you're normally looking for? So, I think this year we've 320 odd sets retiring. Um, and it, it, the way, the way I'll do it is when we first get our list and, and the list does change throughout the year. Uh, I'll look at it. I'll immediately eliminate a lot of, you know, fluff and garbage that's in there. And then we start breaking down, you know, what the better themes are, uh, what sets like flagship sets, things like that. Like there's always going to be a Millennium Falcon. There's always going to be a Disney castle, things like that. Unless there's something really exclusive about it, we can just cross those off and move on. And then just like sourcing anything else, you, you get all the trash out of the way. And then you find yourself left with things that have exclusive parts. They're for, um, they're retailer exclusive, um, shorter shelf life things like that and then you know the pool gets smaller and smaller and you get down to 20 to 40 sets or so and then you just start picking you know it, which which ones you know most about helps so if it's a theme you're familiar with whether it's you know star wars or harry potter or disney i think you should put your focus on those first because it's easier to identify okay well I know this character. I know that this character, say they, they died in the series where they died in real life. Well, chances are you're not going to see them again. So is, do you now know that you're, that this is going to be more limited, right? I guess. And li little pieces like that, you can start to move it up your list and move it up your list. And then I like to compare between Kiba and uh, Brickset. So Brickset.com, uh, they, they give you a fair amount of information in there. You can you basically pull up the set quickly, take an at a glance. It'll tell you how many minifigures, how many are exclusive, things like that. And they will have uh, keywords just like anyone else. So you can click on the keyword and it'll pull up all of the Millennium Falcons, as an example. And you can see how the one you're looking at compares to all of the past examples. Whittle it down that way. And if it still looks good, you move over to Brick Link, because everything in our world is Brick something. Uh, on Brick Link, you can, you can actually go and see the part out value. So what the parts would be worth if you sold all of them individually, which, uh, although I, I tend to have a lot of parts, I'm not recommending that. Um, <laughs> if you look at what, what all of the parts are worth individually, and you look at the highest selling price that you, that you see on Kiba, 
and it, not just like that one oddball like money laundering like rocket ship but it, you know a couple a couple sales that actually happen if you take the two and kind of average them out and add 15 20 ish percent that seems to be what the peak is going to be going down the road and it, there are some exceptions to that but that's that's fairly average and it's a great way to say okay well these are my last 20. i know no that this is going to hit 120 dollars i need i want 100 percent roi so now you can determine your buy cost if that's never going to be possible then you could say okay well i can just eliminate that from my list quickly and we can shrink the pool even more so interesting you could tear through so, pretty quick. Um, so let's let's go back a little bit. I mean that that part's fascinating, but um, I, like we often talk about, I I personally think that the the easiest way to get better at sourcing is to eliminate faster. I think that's actually the part that you you need to you can gain the most speed, in my opinion, yeah. right? So you mentioned getting rid of the the, the garbage, getting rid of the fluff. I, I'm curious what what exactly makes it garbage you know like what what is it like those little valentine birds and and flowers and stuff or, or what what makes something easily discardable as far as a, a, a collector value so well first of all you get the uh the classic set uh classic they're the the big yellow boxes that are just parts mm -hmm. right you right. can wipe those out right away uh they're great for bricklink sellers uh if you are you're an ra guy sometimes you can get them really cheap those work out good for those folks on the quick end but for for investing they're not great um a lot of what do they call them like gimmick sets so you'll get the uh like the stocking stuffers the the ten dollar deals where it's it's elsa just doing her thing you can check those off because that's going to retire and immediately they're going to put out the same set as far as any parent can tell so so you're saying the, the the cheap elsa's we should let it go is that, is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh yes yeah. Oh, oh yeah i, I never I love that you had to wind joke. up for that one um <laughs> it, yeah it, it's a lot of stuff like that um there's it, when you start doing it for a little bit, you can see that you'll get, you'll see a new release. I'm like, a new release? I, I thought that just retired. And didn't it also retire like two years? No, it, they just keep putting them back out. Uh, so okay. you'll, you'll see a lot of real common things like that. Uh, and then there's some themes that, like Minecraft is a good example. Minecraft used to be the hidden gem. Nobody looked at Minecraft because it's they're ugly, they're blocky. You know, for people that are outside of Minecraft, the older folks or whoever doesn't play Minecraft, me, you know, they just look terrible. So people quickly move on from them. So nobody was investing. So they were great because they were collectible, and there was always you know one or two characters that would come in, and they would never be around again. Then the community caught on, and uh, now, then Minecraft just was terrible. You couldn't buy them because, as much as I hate to use the term, uh, there, there was some saturation there. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I forget who, it it doesn't matter. There there was a YouTube channel that just said, "Oh, like, hey, nobody's paying attention to this," and then several channels followed suit. And, I think Minecraft also got to the point where there was uh, some Minecraft fatigue because they only have so many things they can do that are different. And so that fell apart. So now a theme like that, I just cross off the list unless okay. unless you know that there's something special. I watch a lot of YouTube, too much YouTube. And, uh, and, and you know, some of that they'll, they'll pop up with, hey, you know, it's we've been waiting, you know, nine years for this character to appear. Oh well, you should should take note of that, and uh, the keeper doesn't tell you that part, which is kind of cool. 
Yeah. So there's actually, so then on the flip side, as far as like when you're, when you're trying to narrow this down to, to actual buying decisions, uh, you have to know a little bit about the franchises, right? I, I mean, I think that that helps. It sounds like you're looking for enduring overall franchises with exclusivity within that, you know, like a, a star Wars character that only had a limited run. Right. Is that yeah. accurate? I mean, that stuff really helps. Um, uh, so with, with that example, it was, uh, which one was it? Two years ago. Um, I'm bad with character names in Star Wars, but they, there was a character that was in, uh, I think it was like a $40 set or so, and the character died at the end of the season. And then, but the character, when it died, it was a month or two before retirement so it was late and nobody had stockpiled up at that point point. and it was like oh we better do this now and i think from the sale price in q4 to now it's a 250 percent or so wow and <laughs> it, and it, it's not 250 percent roi i mean just price to price you know and yeah. But but that's a ton, and it was just because I happened to see that the character died, and mm -hmm. as is the case with Star Wars, it's if you hang on for too long, or you don't pay attention to what else is coming, uh, you get the little surprise where it's uh, oh this minifigure is now being released in a magazine in Europe for five dollars, and sometimes things like that happen and a US buyer will buy 500 of them from Europe, bring them in and ruin the prices. But wow. interesting. And yeah. that's not even a pitfall I would have thought of. Yeah. Yeah. There's right. some, some strange ones out there. Lego is Lego was typically good about putting a, uh, a decent, a decent gap in figures like that. Now they've thrown a couple curveballs in lately, where like the uh, the UCS Venator, which I don't know if you guys have seen it, six hundred and fifty bucks. It's massive and beautiful. Uh, the even in the manual it said that the minifigure it comes with was exclusive to that set, and the minifigure hadn't been around for I don't remember off the top of my head, say ten years. Right? It was big money minifigure and now it's back out it's in the 650 dollars set it's the only way to get it people weren't necessarily buying a 650 dollars set because of the figure but it was absolutely swaying people that were sitting on the fence on the first that exact same figure is coming out in a 13 dollars set Ooh. oh wow. <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh that's that is, yeah that is not a normal thing uh, it, it was a bit of a surprise i think it was because of a lot of the outcry from the community like hey the first time this came out it was in a 40 dollar set and now it's in a 650 dollar set we've waited all these years what are you doing mm -hmm. and that was their uh their way of asking for forgiveness possibly Lego doesn't give you a lot of those details. They don't tell you what's really going on. So a little bit of conjecture, but hmm. yeah, it, it, sometimes we see pain. So you mentioned, um, you mentioned you have a calculation, you know, that you can kind of project this out is, is there anything more, um, more concrete to the projections to any of the tools that you use or, or sites that you go to, do they offer projections or I, is that the extent of how you try to, uh, narrow down future movement on, as far as price? That's it. Unfortunately, there is no really precise way to do it, especially when you are trying to see, you know, say 18 months into the future from when you put it on your list. But you don't really know what's going to happen from Lego over that time frame. You, you just have to predict the best you can. There is there is a site called Brick Economy that a lot of people reference, 
that will tell you, oh, we expect this to to grow at you know eight percent a year or whatever whatever number they give. I try to tell people to stay away from there. Nobody will ever listen to me because it's the one spot that actually says anything like that. But all the time it'll say, oh, you know, this is going to grow, you know, six to eight percent. It's like, I just sold it and made 90 percent. So what are you talking about? Like, I, I don't I don't know where they get the numbers. They don't make any sense to me. Hmm. But they're the only place that provides anything like that. So take what you Makes can get. Makes it popular. Yeah. 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 I want to I want to kind of throw a hypothetical out there. So and and this is this is coming from someone I don't I I don't build Lego, I don't collect Lego. I I haven't bought a Lego set in years. Um but I did a quick Google search and I saw that uh Michael Gambone or Gambon uh who played Dumbledore in Harry Potter, he passed away in late 2023. Yep. So if there is a a Harry Potter set that is retiring that has a Dumbledore minifigure. I I would imagine is that something that you would then uh, dive a little bit deeper into because of kind of all these things lining up. The set is retiring. It's a popular theme, and the actor passed away. So, in in that specific case, I would probably say no because okay, Harry Potter is a limited source material. Mm -hmm. there's seven movies or something and the last one came out i don't even know quite a quite a while ago and it's Mm -hmm. it must be 10 years anyway so they they just take they almost have a loop where it's like okay we're gonna do all of these rooms from the house we're gonna get the dumbledore's office we're gonna put dumbledore in and then you know we're gonna loop again we're gonna put out a train we're going to put out some of the classrooms. We're going to loop back around. Here's a scene with Dumbledore. And they're just going to keep doing that because they have to. Otherwise, they have to discontinue the theme. Now, when when new material comes out, if there is a new, and well, it would have to be a different Dumbledore, I suppose, because that's the option. Um, then it might be worth thinking about because now there's a new one, they can work off of that for a while. When specific ones are gone from the market for a long time, and then you can think about it. Uh, gotcha. At, at that point, you also have the option of just minifigure investing. Mm-hmm. So if Dumbledore is like one specific Dumbledore that was only ever in one set, that kind of thing, you could buy just those minifigures and invest specifically in those. And it's it's a smaller risk at that point because you're not buying, you know, sets that have already long past since retired or higher end sets. You're just buying a thirty dollar minifigure, hoping that that minifigure goes to hundred bucks someday. And it takes up no storage. You just throw it in a drawer in your desk or whatever. Bag it first, please. <laughs> So just uh, just for for posterity, and in case my kids ever watch this, um, Harry Potter came out yes many many years ago. However, it just played in my children's room a couple of days ago. Um, I believe uh, Richard Harris was the first Dumbledore. He passed away mid series, and then they replaced him with Michael Gambone, and so he's now passed away. Um, so in case there are any Harry Potter people like going. You know, he was the second one, you know, like they, they might be nerding out, you know, so I want to just calm them down, give them a shout, uh, recognize it. And I don't, I'm not an expert, uh, so I apologize if I got any of that wrong. But there is also a new Harry Potter series in the works. Um, I believe it's going to be like a, a HBO um, a serial um, television program, if I remember correctly. So interesting the the fire may be stoked on the on the harry potter franchise so harry potter fans i i I have your back at least a little bit from from what my uh six-year-old tells me that's awesome because they need more material i I can't yeah and the uh those uh those jude law the 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 prequels the those didn't really seem to take on 
quite the the mythology that uh, the original series mm-hmm. did. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, Fantastic Beasts. Is that what those were? Yeah, yeah, it yes. Was Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. My wife's a big Harry Potter fan, and those were kind of just she she really did not care for those. Uh, no. So. I saw you say on on Twitter, and I think it's actually uh, something you reposted recently, but uh, it said you should pretend that twenty percent off is the retail price for Lego. Uh, can you can you explain that a little bit and and kind of help us figure out some ways that we can further reduce the cost of acquiring Lego? Okay, so if it, we're all familiar with rollbacks at Walmart, right? Mm-hmm. So and rollbacks they're they're basically forever so when a set comes out obviously we don't buy anything as new release because then we're holding on to it for what seems like forever so later on in its life you see the price drop to 20 bucks a lot of people uh 20 percent off a lot of people jump and say wow 20 percent off but that's not really a sale because that 20 percent off is going to stick seven days a week for a year so is that even a discount at that point it's basically the new regular price the same thing happens at target and like a lot of the sales you're going to see like this time of year on the retiring sets it'll be they'll have a sale and it'll be 20 percent off if you look at the regular price the regular price is actually already 20 percent off because it's been discounted for so long, they consider it the regular price and then they're discounting 20% on that. So the people who bought it at rollback at Walmart for 20% off, you're now buying at a target for an additional 20% off. So 20% is basically regular price at that point. And Interesting. you'll look at say, I don't know, say Macy's, if something goes on sale there, Macy's sales were weird, but 20% off is kind of the standard Best Buy will do it as well. And it's like, okay, well, everybody can get 20% off there. So just like reselling anything else, you look to your gift cards and coupon stacking. Coupons get tough because most of them don't, like, especially at Kohl's, it's always in the fine print, does not apply to Lego. So you get to play the game a little bit. Um, Barnes and Noble, uh, they have some decent sales here and there. They're rare, and it's even more rare than on anything that you actually want to buy. But they do happen from time to time. Um, gift cards are the biggest one, and even then, the gift cards we buy come from weird places. You find them the uh, like the grocery store gift card sales and things like that. That really helps. It's uh, it's a lot of manufactured discounts. Uh, the RA boys kill it out there. The uh, this year has been wild. We've had a decent burst of clearance, like every six weeks or so. Hmm. Uh, it, it's been a heavy release. I think we're going to break a thousand sets this year as far as releases go that's wow. crazy yeah and and that's an all in that's that's everything with a set number so that includes regular sets poly bags books uh i, I believe pl- the plushes actually have a set number on so it's that's all of their releases uh most of them have the potential to be profitable um, if you look back at the old lego minifigure clocks which who's even heard of those? They're they're clocks. They have you know a digital clock across their torso. Big money. Mm. I sold some of those. Yeah, I've I yeah. sourced those at like TJ Maxx and Ross and sold some of those uh, in Q fours in the past. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> try to buy one now. <laughs> it's yeah. almost it's yeah. almost impossible. So, so they uh, the the set uh, the identifiers uh, they're they're still like what five digits. We have some sixes now. Um, I think I think some of the ones in the VIP shop might have hit seven. Oh, really? So they don't recycle those? They just keep counting up? 
there is a few. So in uh, in our app, we go back to 1953. And there are a couple that have duplicates, which is weird. Uh, there are also a couple that have a, uh, like a, a hyphen. So there's, you know, 7593-2 because there's an alternate version because there was a mistake or something else changed. And they do a lot of odd things with the set numbers over the years. Uh, and do those oddities, do that, does that likely increase the value? Sometimes, uh, like the uh, the Ghost and Phantom Two is out now. Uh, the original version of the Ghost. At the beginning, there was uh, Kanan Jarrus, one of the characters. His minifigure had uh, black hair, okay. which was wrong. So there was uh, eventually they corrected that. They pulled the old ones off the shelf for sold through or whatever, and put out brown hair. The sets that have the black hair are worth a ton of money. Uh, and that's a weird one. It, it's So if you buy it unopened, it's a gamble. Does it have it? Does it not? If you open it to show that it has the right one, now you're selling a new box, but open. And, right. and, and they're huge money, so that's out of my range anyway. Too much gamble for me. Right. Yeah, no, no returns on uh, high value sets like that. I don't want to deal with it. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, so is this kind of like a, a like the action figure um, playbook? You know, do, do you buy like one set to keep and never open, and then you know, do you buy another set to actually build and and add to the personal collection? How's that work? In general, or me personally. You personally, yeah, is it uh, so do you ever do anything like how do you how do you keep your hands off a really cool set that that potentially has a uh, uh, higher value in its future? So it's it's a little different for me, I think. So I didn't build my first Lego set until I was forty and never once touched them ever in my childhood. Uh, wow, and I only I essentially only build them now because <clears throat> I sell them. So with the hard part about Lego investing as a, a side hustle of sorts is it's not like reselling where it, there's there's cash flow and money's coming in and money's coming out all the time. It's a cash flow monster. And I don't inject any capital into the business. I haven't in almost three years now. So wow. for the sake of cash flow, I have all of this. It, this is all used Lego back here. So I will buy bulk lots of sets and I'll, I'll pull out what I need. I'll assemble sets and I'll sell them used. The revenue I generate from that is, is my cash flow for the investing business. So if, if I want to build a set, I'm going to build what I have on hand and then I'll sell that and that'll scratch the itch if I happen to have one. I'm I'm curious about the the market for the used sets. Is it are you building it just to make sure all the pieces are there and then selling it off, or do people want to purchase them pre built and ready to display? Um, I, I'm sure there's a market for people that want them pre built. I don't sell them that way. I build them to make sure I have all the parts it helps and. If you're list, if you're listing, I sell all that on eBay. Uh, it's they sell a lot faster if you take pictures of it, show what kind of condition it's in. You can if it's assembled, a lot of the sets have stickers. You can show that you know the stickers are straight; they're not peeling, whatever. If you just have a pile of parts on the table, or you just you're showing them in bags, maybe they're good, maybe they're bad. You don't really know what you're getting. Uh, I also have kids, so building is kind of fun for them too. Yeah. So it's a uh, it's a perk of the business. Interesting. So, well, I I follow you on Twitter, and and I'm, I mean, unless it's theater, you, you seem to find it fairly therapeutic yourself. Uh, you may be a late bloomer, but 
I get the, I get the hints that you you happen to enjoy it a little bit, right? It, yeah, I, I definitely do. It, it's a lot of fun, and I have whatever I have half a dozen sets or something like that of my own up on top of the wall here, a couple just randomly. The great part about selling them though is I can build them, I can take the pictures, get them listed. And then I can display them and look at them for a little while. And then when they sell, it's like, oh, okay, well, that, that was cool. I don't have a lot of attachment. Uh, I have the new Droidica from Star Wars. I think that thing's great. Um, I have most of the Scooby Doo sets and one Ninjago set that I'm hanging on to those. They're not going anywhere. Uh, but other than that, I don't, I don't really have any interest. They come in and out so fast. God knows I have enough boxes. <laughs> I just look at it whenever I want. It's like the it's the grandparent method, right? It's a you know the grandkids are great, but the best part is you get to give them back when you're done, right? And you get to mm-hmm. you know you build a Lego and then you just sell it when you're done. That's uh that's great. Hey guys, wanted to take a quick second and thank you for listening to the Clear the Shelf podcast. My magnanimous co-host Chris Rasick has put together a gift for you for being a listener. It's called the Monthly Goal Tracking Spreadsheet and it's free. The spreadsheet will help you break down and track how much you've purchased, which should be a leading indicator of how much you will sell. And then you'll be able to track how much you've sold as well as your estimated monthly profit on a daily basis. This will all feed into the daily averages so you can ensure that you're on track to meet your goals each and every month. Grab it for free today over at cleartheshelf.com forward slash goal dash tracking. Thanks again for being a listener. Now back to the show. So, um, yeah. so I want to, I want to talk about, um, methods to, to kind of monitor the marketplace and, and kind of the flow of information and, and, you know, kind of best practices to keep your thumb on the pulse, um, of what's going on in the market. Like how do, how do you stay informed, uh, so, from a business perspective? This is actually kind of my favorite part because buying is simple. It's the same thing over and over again. You already know what you want. It's on sale. So just click, click, click. The rest of it is watching the community. So it's, I've been, I've been here for a few years now. So I've, I'm at the point where I've seen things being the new release through the whole cycle of its life and then, you know, post retirement. So watching things on new release day, watching what the community does, the lines at the store, you know, it's all of the, uh, the reaction videos, the unboxing and all of that. And then watching the community as things go on, it's like, Oh, you know, it's, I've had this thing for a few months now, this new set came out. Now I can finally get rid of this one. It's, it's not cool anymore. It, it's, I don't know what, why I was excited. I just needed something. New. And you can watch how the community acts. It's like, okay, so when they lose love for things, you can kind of feel that the value is not going to go crazy afterwards because those are the people that spend the big money on Amazon and everywhere else. It's not granny buying for the grandkids spending three hundred dollars for a hundred dollar set. Granny will spend forty five dollars for a fifteen dollar set because she doesn't know it was supposed to be fifteen dollars. But if you're spending three hundred for a hundred dollar set, you're not spending that kind of money by mistake. So watching how the community reacts to all of that it's it's huge and it's fun and you know it's it, i think i'm in seven or eight discord servers um a bunch in reddit probably 10 facebook groups that i'm in and out of uh, it, it's a little weird now getting into some of those because i feel it necessary to contact the owner and kind of tell them what i do i don't want anybody to accuse me of being a spy hanging out in a group Right, you know, it's, some of those people are touchy. Woo. Yeah, <laughs> um, and a, a lot of them do not like scalpers. Oh, they get upset. <laughs> um, I can see that. Yeah, but there's a lot of good information in there, and there are sets that are coming out 
uh, on June 1st that we knew about back in September because oh, wow. we watched so closely. So knowing back in September, it's like, okay, well, now we can adjust our expectations for retirement because we already know nine months from now, this set is going to be re-released. So don't buy that. It, it's Q4. The discounts are awesome. If you can't move it in the next four or five months, that don't even touch it because you know what's going to happen to the market when the same set comes back out. Hmm. And uh, that's huge. It's uh, and, it, and it's a lot of fun because yeah. you can see people getting upset. Like, oh, I just bought that for 300, 400 bucks and now it's coming out for 100. It's like, well, I wonder if you bought that from me. <laughs> <clears throat> so one thing one thing i'm curious i know you've talked about you know buying online you've talked about buying uh, you know the ra guys who can absolutely crush it because of discounts um and so i know you can buy these anywhere and i i saw you even tweet about uh like lego's event on star wars day back in well it would have been earlier this month on may 4th yep. um but I'm curious if there if there are any other places you're buying from specifically for the investing part. Like, are you buying from from third other third party sellers who have maybe mispriced something? Uh, and and if so, like, are there any safeguards that you do to try to protect yourself from buying inauthentic pieces? So I I will buy from third party sellers. I will not sell them on Amazon though. Uh, just because I am too cautious, like possibly way more cautious than I need to be. That account is worth far too much to me to source, you know, five units from a random person and roll the dice on it. Uh, mm -hmm. Just sell them on eBay. Uh, it's, it's less money selling on eBay for sure. But if you find them at the right price, I don't sweat, you know, 5% or so here and there, if it's that good. Uh, if, if the seller has enough reviews, then whatever, a thousand reviews, the 5,000 reviews, you know, those people, they're going to send you the right product because they value their account as well, mm -hmm. I would think. Unless it looks like they've just been mashing on the keyboard for the name of their store. I'll, I'll skip those folks. Uh, if it's, you know, low reviews, five, 10, 15 reviews, I'll pop the box open. I'll verify that everything in the box is legit and I'll just sell a new open box on eBay. The price break there is so minimal that that doesn't matter either. Uh, I love to source on Facebook marketplace. Same thing. I'll sell it all on eBay. Uh, a lot of that is people that, you know, they bought the set they wanted on new release day and they got a gift with purchase that they have no interest in, the free mm -hmm. set. Some of those free sets you'll find for, you know, $10 or so and you'll turn around and sell them for 50 or 60. And that's fantastic. And if, depending on when they come out, if they coincide with an army builder, uh, like some of the clone trooper battle packs things like that collectors will go and they'll buy 20 or 30 of those when they buy them they'll get a whole bunch of free gifts and then you'll find somebody who's got 10 of the same thing that's fantastic it, nobody i don't want to say nobody most of the people that are doing this don't want one unit of anything because it's annoying one one copy of the set disappears in a box, in a closet, in the shelf, in the warehouse. Where is that thing? You want enough to fill a box if you can. Uh, Facebook's good for that too. So like, I just want to stuff one more in this box so I have an even number and I can put it away. Uh, eBay to eBay works too. You know, I've heard recently of people having some luck on StockX landing things cheap enough that they'll be good down the road. I haven't played with that one. Uh, I guess their verification process is pretty good. So I don't know. I'll try that someday, I suppose. 
Yeah, that makes sense with the, the sneakers that they sell and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, funny you mentioned StockX. I was going to ask you about that. If if uh, outside of condition, you know, Amazon versus eBay, you know, eBay being able to sell open box and that sort of stuff. So disregarding condition, are there other platforms that you sell on, or is Amazon your best outlet? So if it's new and in good shape, I'll sell on Amazon. Uh, anything remotely damaged, I sell on eBay. Uh, if I get it unbelievably cheap, then I put it on Facebook and I just get it out the door. Because what are the fees, 5% or something? I love mm-hmm. selling on Marketplace. Uh, I, I, I should be a little more specific there. I love that my wife sells on Marketplace. <laughs> I, I cannot take any of the credit there because uh, I would probably do things that would get me in big trouble if I sold on Marketplace. Because those <laughs> Is that still available? Nice. Oh yeah. yeah. And I mean, obviously she's a tolerant woman cause she de- deals with me, but it, it's, she deals with all of those people. It's she's almost at 400 sales shipped on marketplace and easily wow. has as many in-person sales. Oh, wow. It, during the, uh, during the pandemic, it looked like a McDonald's drive through in front of my house. In Q4. <laughs> <laughs> it was just lines of traffic. It was awful. <laughs> but yeah, she she's an ace. That is a great resource because if you are buying, you know, clearance price items, you, you could sell them even at retail price. And th- there's no fees. I mean, it, it's cash transactions at that point. So mm-hmm. that's nice. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Are are you sending very much of your Lego inventory into Amazon to have FBA <laughs> ship it out? Um, I was, so up until last Q4, a great deal of my inventory went through FBA. Um, okay. then when all of the new fees and everything started, I said, eh, you know, I'm just going to hit the brakes and uh, I'm just going to wait, wait till the smarter folks come along and explain to me what's going on here. So, uh, thanks for the show for helping out with that. Um. Uh, and now it's like I don't, I don't know if I'm going to use that VA for much anymore. Okay. If, come Q4, I'm sure I will because I, it's just because it's Q4 and it's just it's mm-hmm. overload and it's just I can't imagine doing FBM through all of that. That just sounds too painful for me. Uh, mm-hmm. I actually like packing boxes. I like having a little bit more control to make sure that, you know, it's, I don't have, you know, a medium sized set going in a big box with, you know, three bubbles in it. Mm-hmm. Returns are fantastic. The way we sell, I, I think we're sitting somewhere 1%-ish. That's with, fantastic. Yeah. Well, cause I sell, I sell so few current releases we can basically call it zero, right? Uh, I can't say I don't sell any, but I sell enough. I can basically say I don't. So it, it, there are no returns. People, people are buying these with a very specific intent. And I am so cautious that I, I give them as little reason as possible. There's, mm-hmm. there's always the oddball, you know, the one person who pops the box, takes the minifigure and returns it. Or, you know, it's, they ship it back to, you know, poly bag. Um, oh, yeah, that was painful. Yeah, I mean, we don't get a lot of returns that come back sellable. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, they're, they're very, very few. So, um, so I'm, I'm curious if, if the things that you do send into FBA, since, since they are going to be higher dollar, they're going to be collectible. Uh, what kind of prep are you doing, uh, you know, to allow it to survive an Amazon warehouse and, you know, the UPS driver who's going to sit on it and, and all that kind of stuff? Um, I will, I will bubble and bag just about everything at this point. Okay. Uh, I am still too cheap to invest in bubble bags because the big ones are expensive. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe eventually I'll do that. 
but yeah, it's a bubble wrap them, throw them in a bag, you know, it's put your stickers on the outside, get them all packed up nice. Uh, there's been a few that have been delivered to me in the frustration free box oh. <laughs> that I will give back to them in the frustration free box. Um, I've never had one returned like that. So I'm guessing it worked out all right. Uh, those boxes are awesome. I love them. Because then I can just stack them up individually. And it makes me feel really good seeing them all safe. Because uh, those boxes, are those sets are typically expensive that are in there. And if you stack them improperly, they, the boxes do start to balloon or they'll like warp and twist a little bit in those boxes. I mean, those things are bulletproof. So I like that. And free is for me. Absolutely. What are, what are some of the like typical challenges that people have when they uh, get into reselling or, or investing in Lego? Um, so I guess we, just going through the, the lifespan of a set, the first pitfall is they will see something and it'll be a brand new listing and it'll be the first time they see it in the store. And wow, this is, you know, it's $40 in the store. It's day one, Amazon's not in stock. It's $85, I can move it right now. This is amazing. And then they'll send it in for FBA. And so it, a very common thing that's happened over the last year or two is new releases show up at Kohl's and the employees at Kohl's will just open the boxes and put them on a shelf five days before the set is released. Mm -hmm. And then a reseller will get it and make a listing real quick and they'll put it up. And great. If you can move it that fast, good for you. But mm -hmm. you, you got a five-day window and then Amazon's in stock. For the next 18 months or two years and what what do you do with the set now do you return it no don't return it returns are terrible don't do that so now you're stuck with it for three years or you're selling at a loss or what do you do with it? that's that that's quite the pitfall and that that burns people all the time or Sometimes Lego will come in stock on a set, a new release, and it will be a Lego exclusive for a month or so. And then after that month, all of the rest of the retailers will come in. Very similar situation. So same thing, people will see that it's not in stock at Amazon, the price looks good, they'll buy it two days before the uh, the exclusive period ends and they'll send it out to FBA. And so not watching your calendar and not staying in the loop with things like that is uh, can bring a lot of pain. Not watching future releases is a pain or buying the flagship sets because you don't want to be stuck with something that, like we talked about that's coming out again. The, the new version of the Disney Castle, which is, I don't know where it is, 350 bucks or something. When the last one retired, everybody was thrilled. This set's been around for a while. It sells great, out of stock periods. The, the money's really good. Guys, it's a flagship set. You, you probably have a year window between retirement and uh, new release. But a year is kind of tight, and you don't really know what's going to happen. People were spending thousands and thousands of dollars buying this thing, and I think it was five weeks later they announced the new one. So, yeah, and it, it's not only is it new, but it's better, and it's the uh, it's the anniversary packaging. The, the thing is amazing. And people are losing a hundred, hundred and fifty bucks a piece on those sets. Ouch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's small windows, but you know, it's, you got to watch out. 
and it's all of the information that's available. So it, it's it, it's almost negligent, I think. If you're spending that kind of money, you got to pay attention to that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think everything else we do is fairly safe. I mean, watch your buy costs like anything else. Yeah, it'd be different if if the information wasn't readily available because it's 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 very clear that knowing the information and you know being tuned into uh, what's going on in the community as much as possible is is probably one of the biggest factors in in success in this yeah. market. So, um, which and that may answer uh, the question that I was going to ask you next. Um, but uh, I, I know you mentioned, uh, you know, re-releases and, and, you know, getting the timing down as much as possible. Um, are there any other factors that uh, uh, specifically talking about when it's time to liquidate? You know, are there anything pop up that, that will cause you to, you know, kind of cut bait on certain sets other than you know, actual schedules? Yeah, I mean, it, it, that, that's basically it. If a new release, re-release is coming. I'll bail pretty quickly. Uh, so there's this weird, this weird window where they'll announce that it'll leak. They don't actually announce it. It'll leak out that a set is coming, and we'll get the details. And so between then and when Lego makes the official announcement, in that that little period of time, that's when you have to bail on those sets. Once Lego makes it public that they're happening, then the average consumer knows about it because you'll actually be able to find it on Lego's website. Prior to the official announcement, it's just in Discord and Reddit, whatever. Then it's just the, only the hardcore kids that know about that stuff. And they weren't going to buy from you anyway. They were just going to tell you that you're not a nice person for selling things. So, uh, so it, it, that's basically the window. You bail out that. Uh, for for underperforming sets, I tend to go springtime. So basically, the end of Q1, beginning Q2, a full a full cycle after retirement. So if it retires December 31st this year, then say April or something of 26, I would give up. Uh, there are, there, there's some weird ones out there where it's, you know, first Q4 post retirement, there's just in influx of salary because investors know that that's the big time of year to sell is Q4. It high highest prices and we all know that. What happens though is now virtually every single person sends in at the beginning of Q4 and the price goes in the wrong direction for too long. And then, it, you know, the seller count goes nuts and the usual things for clearance fines and all the rest of that where people don't care. The recovery after Christmas when they all sell out so cheap can be wonderful. It's like, oh, this was awful. Even like the first and second week in December, the prices were bad. But in March, oh my God, look how beautiful this is. You want to take a picture of it. Uh, so sometimes I'll, I'll wait around for that and see if that happens because it can happen to some weird sets. And it's like, I don't even know why I invested in this. I must have found it on clearance or something. It wasn't on my hit list. And then you'll see, you know, March or April, this turned out great. So I'm glad I stuck around. If that doesn't happen, then out the door, I'll take my 30% or so and be done with it. Uh, I am, I'm always curious because there's been so much, so much as, but what's, I guess, what's one of your biggest wins? What could you brag about when it comes to selling Lego? So, I, I think as far as the the uh, the investing goes, the fish tank is still one of my probably one of my favorites. Okay. So the the fish tank that 
That was originally twenty nine ninety nine. It was a Walmart exclusive, and it had several sale periods. The uh, basically the first time anybody noticed it, it hit a leads group, and it ended up shooting up to right around five hundred sellers on the listing, which was ridiculous. And then, you know, it, it, the price went to hell as it always does when, you know, you get that many people on and then everybody sold out and there was a recovery and then it went on sale. Uh, Walmart had it on sale. Basically, yep, there it is. Yeah. Walmart marked it down to, I think it was 2250. And then it hit another leads list and that one actually hit several leads lists. Uh, and I remember because I was on some of those. Um, and I and I laughed because again it shot up to was it 470 some odd sellers or something crazy like that. And then that Q4 after the second wave, it got down to I think it was 33 dollars and some change. And it's like that's embarrassing, guys. What are you doing? It's like <laughs> this should not be selling for 33 dollars in like right around Q4. It's the worst. And uh, last time I looked, it was $95 or so. Yeah, okay, I can see it on the screen here. It's 90 bucks for the buy box. Mm -hmm. The cheapest I saw that on a shelf, like personally saw, was 1750 And there were a few people that were buying it cheaper than that around the country. So mm -hmm. figured 1750 to $89 mm -hmm. and change. And that wasn't one of the sets, like even when it was uh, not quite as good of a discount, when it was 22 50 or so, that wasn't like luck of the draw finding it in your store. That was back up the truck, let's buy 50 of them and just keep going. I'm pretty sure I paid off the car I was driving that year with fish tanks. Wow. <laughs> Because they were plentiful, they were. There was obviously enough of them out there that there could be 500 sellers on a listing at one point. So when everybody else was panicking and selling, you could buy from those sellers, you could buy from Walmart, you could buy from as many as you wanted. You could basically get your hands on. And I'm I'm sure there were areas of the country that it wasn't quite that easy. But in this area, you can't find anything ever. So if we could find it, I would imagine it was fairly common. And that's not going to be the last time that happens. And it, that set was cool. And if you look at it, actually, it's one of my daughter's sets. It's up there because we got one that was just too damaged to sell. Uh, if, if you look at it, it's like, okay, this is a fairly generic set. It's a creator three-in-one. You can build three different sets with it. There is no minifigures. 95% of the parts, your average collector just has kicking around the house. There's basically nothing special about it. To the best of my knowledge, there's never been a fish tank before like an actual quality looking fish tank. It was the first one. And it was a Walmart exclusive that basically nobody knew about until it started showing up on retirement lists. Like, wait a minute. I don't think I've ever even seen that. Hmm. So the set got no love and no attention basically until it was time for it to go. And then people couldn't even get it because every reseller in the whole community was buying it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that one was nuts. So what? Uh, all right. So now that we teased, uh, you know, the 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 money that could be made and and you know the um, the, the lucrative nature. Uh, what is it, what does the storage look like? Is what I'm curious. Like, oh. how many <laughs> sets are you are you sitting on at any given time? Like. Do you, do you um, have a uh, how many storage units you know or you know warehouse or, or what does the, the storage component look like for you it's awful it's awful <laughs> um so ba basically the uh 
the name of the game for me is how many family members can I pester and how for, how forgiving are they going to be? So it's, it's I, I suggest everybody in group that if you do multiple addresses to, to real uh, multiple accounts, use multiple addresses and then store where you ship. It's, it's pretty bad advice, except it's really helpful. And if you can do it, you're not going to get your account shut down because you're not telling any lies, right? I came up with that because sometimes that's what I have to do. Mom, I need some space. Right. It's uh, <laughs> she doesn't need the space anymore, so I'll fill her up. I'll fill up here. Uh, every available inch of everything in my life has lego in it at this point <laughs> uh, it, it's it's bad like it, we'll get a delivery and it'll be like all right well we're clearing some space in the pantry closet for a little bit <laughs> before the, before this moves out of the house it's uh it's going to be worth my time our storage is jammed it, it, it's a it, Storage is the biggest pitfall, I think. Eh, maybe the pitfall is not the word, but it, it's the biggest nuisance, <laughs> I think, of Lego investing because it takes up a lot of space and yeah. it's not cheap. Uh, well, here it's not cheap. There's there's a few people in group out in the, uh, the Northwest who are just, they're paying prices that I, don't even make sense to me because it's so cheap and it's weird. Like twenty five percent of what we pay out here. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it, it's uh, two hundred and fifty square feet is four fifty a month here. That's well, crazy. Yeah, it's it's not wonderful. <laughs> yeah, storage rates are a little insane. The proximity of the city, it's it's not so great which is why we put so much effort into storing with like every person in the family that we can because storage is just too much you've talked about you know uh, people in group and and i know you've talked about the app uh so can you tell us you know like, where can people learn more about you and, and also learn more about like brick dynasty and what you guys offer uh you know for people who are interested in in like in, investing in and, and reselling lego yeah. so Basically, everything I do is linked in my Twitter bio, my link tree there. Uh, my Twitter is yes, I can. Uh, can with two ends, which is actually my little. For the people who are looking at this, you can see it on the screen. Um, so, Brick Dynasty lives within the Divine community. Um, we just talk like all the time. Uh, our app is, we have two versions of the app. Uh, we have a free version and an exclusive version that lives within Brick Dynasty and the group. Uh, the, the free version has most of what you need for set analysis and upcoming info. The version in the group, we put all of the Keepa info right in there. So there's no need to look anymore because that's annoying. So we, we try to cover every base we possibly can in group. Uh, all of the things we've talked about today as far as you know, analyzing sets and pricing and you know, what things could look like in the future, we try to give an at-a-glance version of every set on the market. And then I'll go detailed for other things. Um, and yeah, that's basically what we do. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, perfect. So at the end of every one of these, we, we try to, we try to end with a quote and I didn't, I didn't know whether to like pull up an investing quote. Do I go look for a Charlie Munger for a Warren Buffett? And that didn't really seem to fit. So this week I decided to, uh, I decided to, I also even tried to look up quotes from the founder of the Lego company. Uh, and that 
those are rare. There's like two of them out there on the internet. So instead, I pulled an interesting fact from the book called 50 Years of the Lego Brick uh, by Christian Humberg. And uh, he says that when Ole Kirk Christensen, who is the founder of Lego, established the company name Lego in 1934, uh, it was a fortunate play on words. So it was kind of one of those happy accidents. He said that uh, Ole was inspired by the Danish phrase leg goat, which means play well. Uh, and so he took the beginning of each word and made what he thought was a nice sounding imaginary word out of them. Uh, and he was unaware that the first person present singular of the verb legere is lego, which is Latin for I assemble. Uh, and so when I came across that, I was like, oh, that's, that's interesting. So that's the, that's the quote of the week. Um, Ken, I appreciate you spending, uh, some time with us and, and talking about this. It's, it's a fascinating rabbit trail of reselling, uh, at least for me. So appreciate you coming and hanging out, man. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you guys. All right. That's the pod, everybody. Make sure to like and subscribe uh, to keep away the section threes, and we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Clear the Shelf with Chris and Chris. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a screenshot on your phone and share to Facebook, Instagram, or your favorite FBA group, and be sure to tag me and let me know why you liked it and what you'd like to hear more from us in the future. Also, I'd like to give you some free gifts for listening. Head over to rabbittrailchallenge.com and repricerchallenge.com for some free courses to further your business. Thanks for listening.